been walking in my sleep too long. Tell me more about Robert Knight. How did you find him? Well, Tim Kaiser, uh, producer, uh, said, I think you should meet this guy. He's a really interesting guy. He claims he knows and shot Hendrix and Zeppelin and, you know, shot the final photo of Stevie Ray Vaughan. I'm like, wow, that's pretty heavy. Um, so I, I went for a meeting and I, I, I wanted to kind of see if this stuff was for real and what Robert's character was like. I showed up about a half hour early and um, uh, Robert was eating lunch with somebody else and I said, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm early. And, and he said, no, no, sit down, sit down. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I sat down. He's like, John, meet Slash. And I'm like, I'm looking at myself in Slash's mirrored rim glasses and I have the dumbest look on my face. And I'm like, at that point, I'm like, okay, so maybe he knows a few of these guys. Some people collect stamps, some people collect butterflies. I think I kind of collect rock stars. This fall, you know, I'm, I'm 58 years old, wondering, do I have a career? Legendary photographer Robert Knight is on a new mission. So for an hour we sat there and I watched him interact with Slash and I just thought it was so beautiful and genuine. And when Slash went away, um, I got to hear Robert, some of Robert's stories. And the very first story he told me was the one in 1990 where he was asked to be the only photographer to shoot the Alpine Valley Wisconsin show with Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton, Robert Cray. And um, he was really becoming good friends with Stevie because Robert has never done any drugs and Stevie had just gotten sober at that point so they were kind of buddies to share that similar thing and uh, Robert walked Stevie to the helicopter and subsequently that helicopter crashed that night the next day Robert's phone started blowing up with offers from Rolling Stone magazine and you know wanting this and that for the cover I mean overnight Robert's career you know is instantly at his fingertips and he turned down every single offer to release those photos for two years because that's just not who he is as a person and that decision right there is why I made this film because I just wanted to tell the story of a person that at that point would would choose character over career that's unbelievable so is that the point you want to get across to your audience then it's one of the points I think you know what also I like is that Robert was the outcast as a kid he was not in the cool club and really didn't have an art or a craft and I think we all feel that way at times. I mean, even as, even as filmmakers, we wonder if we really deserve to be a filmmaker. And I think a lot of these guys felt the same way as guitar players, and they talk about that stuff in ways that I think so relevant to anyone who's ever wanted anything out of life. And um, I think they teach us to, um, to, to, to pay attention to seemingly insignificant and obscure obsessions that expand into careers. Like, you know, for Jeff Beck, it was drawing guitars all over his school books. For um, Steve Vai, it was the way notes looked on a page of paper. I mean, I think that kind of stuff we all can look back at some point in our career and realize we were sort of fascinated by something. And as we may have expanded on that, it turned into a career, or maybe we just ignored it. And oftentimes people do ignore it. And I think, you know, it was the same for Robert. He didn't know what it was about guitar players, but he just wanted to be there. And so photography was the excuse. Robert is the ultimate fan and I think the ultimate connector. Photography is almost third and he's happened to have been at the right place at the right time which have made him an incredible photographer. And I often say you have to be careful what you wish for because it might happen. It's sort of like Forrest Gump. He sort of shows up and like the, that monumental event is happening. We, we often call him, it's a horrible analogy, but the Forrest Gump of rock and roll. But uh, it's true because Robert's just like, oh yeah, I was at the Whiskey Go-Go when I was 16 years old. The day Zeppelin came in and they were still called the New Yardbirds and had all the photos of those guys when they were in their like very early 20s. I mean, and that happened time and time again for Robert. So uh, it, it's, it's really incredible and sort of get into his mind. And really, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to see his process. Tell me, how was it going backstage, watching them do their element, being a director in film, yeah. just going on the road, like in bus, like? Well, it's funny. Like last night when I was watching the Sick Puppies perform, I've gotten to know them so well. You know, I got to know Slash pretty well, and uh, it's funny to watch them in their mode. Like when Slash puts on the top hat, I'm like, whoa, he's at work, you know. And uh, when Sick Puppies get into that that set last night here at AFI, it was like, wow, they're at work, and. They're just such, it's just, it's, I love being around entertainers and they're performers and they know what it means to be, you know, to be a performer. And uh, any great musician must know that as much as being a good musician, that it's all about performance. I mean, that's why a lot of good performers actually aren't good musicians, but we love them anyway because they're so entertaining, intriguing. So what's the audience going to see when they see this film? What are they going to remember? What's the main thing? Uh, well, I, I hope they I hope they identify with Robert because he is so vulnerable in this in this film. 
you know, he gave me so much access to um, his insecurities as a person. Um, things that are going on in his life that you have to see in the film with his mom um, and uh, also just how, how fragile our existence is and if we pay attention to things we can really make anything happen. All right. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us. This is John Chester, the director of Rock Prophecies. You have to see this movie. It'll rock you out. I'm Sherry Nadell, your host with Real TV Films here at AFI Dallas. Screaming, so I'm leaving.